San Antonio's police chief says an SAPD officer shot a suspect after that suspect hit him with a car. It happened around 1045 last night in the 11,700 block of Blanco and West Avenue on the north side. Chief William McManus says the officer was responding to a disturbance at a McDonald's. When the officer tried to approach the suspect on foot, the chief says the suspect hit the officer in the legs with his vehicle. SAPD says the officer then started shooting at the suspect, hitting him multiple times. A suspect was taken to a hospital. The officer has been on duty for one year. This morning, at least 85 people are reported dead after Hurricane Ian struck the west coast of Florida. It was one of the strongest storms ever to hit that area. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, Florida's emergency officials are standing by their efforts to evacuate people from the storm's path. I wouldn't have changed anything. The death toll from Hurricane Ian is rising, especially around Fort Myers, Florida. Lee County officials ordered evacuations less than 24 hours before landfall. That was a day after some neighboring counties and two days after storm surge warnings. Everyone wants to focus on a plan that might have been done differently. Well, I'm going to tell you, I stand 100 percent with my county commissioners, my county manager. Governor Ron DeSantis points out earlier forecasts had centered on Tampa. It's easy to second guess them, but they were ready for the whole time and, um, and, and made that call when, when there was justifiable to do so. He also notes Lee County residents could have gone to shelters. They informed people and most people did not want to do it. I mean, that's just that's just the reality. Senator Rick Scott of Florida was the state's governor through several hurricanes. He says it's important to evaluate the emergency response to each major storm. As we go through this, we'll find out, is there things that we could do better to make sure we don't lose people's lives? For now, many Floridians are just focusing on what they have left. I lost my boat, I lost everything I had, but save three guys is worth it. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, we hope you will help us extend a helping hand to those touched by the devastation of Hurricane Ian. Later today, we will be hosting a phone bank in partnership with the Red Cross to raise money for relief efforts in Florida. The phone lines will be open from noon to 7 p.m. We'll share that number a little later on. A woman who accused is accused of recruiting migrants from Texas to fly to Martha's Vineyard has been officially identified as Perla Huerta. Back in September, we told you about the League of United Latin American Citizens or LULAC offering a $5,000 reward for information on a woman named Perla. Well, last month, about 50 Venezuelan migrants were flown from Texas to the Massachusetts resort town using Florida taxpayer funds. According to the New York Times, Huerta is a former combat medic and counterintelligence agent recently discharged after two decades in the U.S. Army. One migrant says that the woman offered him food, clothes and money in exchange to fly others to find others rather willing to fly to Massachusetts. In June, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis set aside $12 million to transport unauthorized migrants out of the Sunshine State. But shortly after, the money was being used here in San Antonio to round up asylum seekers. Pittsburgh police detectives are investigating the death of a football fan after the Steelers game this weekend. A man died after apparently falling off an escalator at the stadium just after the game against the New York Jets. Paramedics worked to save the man on site and he was taken to a local hospital in critical condition. According to Pittsburgh police, the man later died from his injuries. The stadium has a capacity of more than 68,000 and is home to both the Steelers and the University of Pittsburgh football teams. Three U.S. postal workers have been arrested in a $1.3 million fraud and identity theft scheme. The Justice Department is accusing the postal employees and a civilian accomplice of stealing credit cards in the mail. According to the DOJ, the credit cards were then used at a variety of high-end retail stores in New York and New Jersey. The DOJ says five other individuals involved in fraud and identity theft schemes still haven't been caught. The suspects could get lengthy prison sentences if found guilty.